Hello everyone, and welcome to Sasguru's YouTube channel, your go-to source for all things Salesforce. In this video, we'll help you conquer your Deloitte Salesforce developer interview with our ultimate guide. With our guidance, you'll be well prepared to articulate your thought process, showcase your skills, and impress Deloitte's interviewers. We'll cover common scenarios and delve into the best approaches to ensure you stand out in your interview. Let's jump right in. How would you write an apex trigger for automating the process whenever a new contact is created that assigns it to an existing account based on a custom field value? To tackle this task, you'd write a before insert trigger on the contact object. The trigger would iterate over the incoming contacts, use a SOQL query to find the matching account based on the custom field and then associate the contact with that account. Remember to bulkify the trigger to handle multiple records and avoid SOQL queries inside loops to prevent governor limits issues. Here's a simplified version of what the code might look like. Craft a SOQL query to retrieve all closed one opportunities with a total value greater than 1 million within the last fiscal quarter. The query will need to filter based on the opportunity stage, amount, and the close date fields. Here's how you could structure it. Describe how you would implement a batch apex class to update opportunities that have been inactive for over a year. Batch Apex is ideal for processing large datasets since it allows you to define a job that can be divided into manageable chunks, thus avoiding governor limits. The class would implement the database.batchableS object interface and typically include three methods, start, execute, and finish. Here's a simple structure of what that class might look like. To execute this batch class, you would initiate it in Apex using the database.execute batch method, specifying the batch size according to your needs. Explain your approach to prevent hitting governor limits in a complex Salesforce trigger. In Salesforce, Apex triggers must be designed carefully to avoid hitting governor limits, particularly when dealing with large sets of data. Here's how you can avoid these limits Bulkify your code write triggers that can handle multiple records at a time. Optimize queries make sure SOQL queries are outside of for loops and are selective using indexed fields. Limit DML operations accumulate records to update or insert in a list and perform DML operations outside of for loops. Use it future or queuable for operations that can be done asynchronously. Use it future methods or queuable apex to offload processing. Static variables. Use static variables to ensure code within the trigger does not execute multiple times. Error handling. Implement robust error handling to catch and manage exceptions without reaching governor limits. Test and monitor. Always test your triggers under expected data volumes and monitor them using the limits class. How can you perform a long-running operation on Salesforce records without impacting the user experience? In Salesforce, operations that take a long time to complete can be executed asynchronously to ensure they don't affect the user experience. Asynchronous execution can be achieved through various methods, including future methods, mark methods with it future to run them asynchronously, Batch Apex handle large datasets by breaking the operation into smaller batches. Queuable Apex, similar to future methods, but provides more flexibility and the ability to chain jobs. Scheduled Apex, execute a class at specified times. Here's an example of a future method that performs an operation asynchronously What are the best practices for writing test classes in Apex? Writing effective test classes in Apex is crucial for ensuring code quality and functionality. Best practices include 
test all use cases, cover both positive and negative scenarios. Use test data, utilize at test setup to create test records once and use them in multiple test methods. Avoid hard coding IDs, create test data within test classes instead of relying on existing data. Assert results, use system.assert System.assert equals and system.assert not equals to validate outcomes. Bulk test, ensure your code works with a single record as well as with bulk records. Check governor limits, use test.start test and test stop test to reset governor limits and to test asynchronous code. Use descriptive method names, make it clear what each test method is intended to validate. How do you handle null values in APEX to prevent null pointer exceptions? Handling null values is critical to prevent runtime exceptions. In APEX, this can be achieved by Null checks always check if a variable is null before accessing its properties or methods. Safe navigation operator introduced in Winter 21. This operator safely navigates relationships without throwing a null pointer exception. Using default values, assign a default value if a variable is found to be null. Example of a null check with a safe navigation operator. By implementing these practices, you can write robust Apex code that gracefully handles null values. You're asked to ensure data quality by preventing the creation of duplicate records in Salesforce. How do you tackle this? Salesforce offers duplicate management rules that I would configure to identify potential duplicates upon record creation or update. If more complex criteria are needed, I would create an Apex trigger to check for duplicates against a set of predefined conditions before allowing the record to be saved. Describe how you would build a feature in Salesforce to allow customers to schedule appointments, which must then be approved by staff. I'd use a combination of custom objects for appointment scheduling and Salesforce's approval process to handle the approval by staff. Customers could schedule appointments via a Salesforce community and staff could approve them directly within Salesforce, ensuring a streamlined process.